Alright. How are we doing today? My name is Dr. Danielson. Hello, Dr. Danielson. How are we doing? So, today we're just going to be looking at his cardiovascular um, exam. So, we're just going to start off by looking at his chest and the up and just making sure that there's no abnormal palpitations, um, there's no um, discolorations, no abnormal hair patterns, anything along those lines. Then we're just going to ask him to look at his hands and we're looking for cyanosis or um, pitting of the nail, nails and the edema or anything along those lines and the palm and cyanosis then we're going to ask the patient to lay down on the table lay down and we're going to look for the jugular vein so we're going to ask the patient to turn wow 45 degrees and turn up um no 45 degrees so lay down and turn their head away and then we're just going to shine a vein or a light not a vein looking for the jugular vein and see if that protrudes at all then we would take a couple of cell phones or rulers and we'd be looking one would be going from the maximum point the other one would be coming in from there and just seeing if that raises at all or lowers um, the jugular vein you'd just be seeing um, two to three centimeters is like the normal or less than two to three centimeters then we'd be looking at the patient and we'd be palpating for um, anything. We'd just be checking, seeing if there's any different um, patterns, looking at the apical pulse and seeing if there's any, um, finding the apical pulse of the heart. Then we would ask the patient to turn over after we found the apical pulse. And other side, yep. <laughs> And we would see if that increases the heart rate of the apical pulse. If we saw it originally, it should. So, we'll patient flip back. Um, okay, and then now we're going to be palpating for thrills and murmurs, um, or sighs and heaves. So, we're just going to start with the um, bilateral or back portion of our hands and coming down. All the way, so it's gonna be going through the aortic and pulmonary to the epigastric, um, and just feeling any difference between those. And then we're going to be palpating with for a thrill, and we're just gonna be using our fingertips for that again, pulmonary or aortic and pulmonary, and just following it down, tricuspid, and then mitral valves. See so if there's any difference there. Then we're going to ask the patient to sit up and we're going to find the border of his heart on the left side. So we're just going to palpate, have a nice hand up their head and find the border right there. Okay. And then we're going to be going over, so we're just going to go over all their different um, aortic, pulmonary, um, mitral, and tricuspid valves. So we're going to start with the diaphragm, and then we're just looking for normal heart sounds. Okay, so um, we're just looking for normal S1 and S2 sounds. Um, S3, if we heard that, we would pro it would probably just be a, no major cause or anything. If we heard an S4 heart sound, that'd be a refer, making sure that we do that. Um, and then what we're gonna ask the patient to do is we're gonna go over the aortic and we're gonna ask the patient to um, take a breath in and just breathe, or just breathe normally. Or with the diaphragm, so switching her bell. Okay. 
Okay, no abnormal heart sounds there. And then we are going to, uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna ask the patient to um, go over and bend forward a little bit. Take a breath, take a breath in. And all the way out, hold it. Okay. And that was normal. And then I, we're just going to ask the patient to lay on their side. And we're just going to find a mitral valve and put the valve. That one is done. And. Okay, that was normal. That was it.